Let's get it. Would it be wrong for me to say that maybe Robin isn't as bad as we all thought? <laughs> Some people are going to be like, what are you talking about, James? You've been away for too long. I would submit this. Sometimes when we look at this situation with Robin and Cody, we see her as this master manipulator, the person who's coming in and they're throwing all this salt in the game that somehow she came in and she threw the leg up on Cody and changed this whole outlook on life. But the truth of the matter is, is that when you look at the situation that Cody found himself in with the ladies that we call the OG3, Mary, Christine, and Janelle, it's not that... Robin came in and did this magical thing to him and changed his whole personality and the way he looked at life. Instead, let's think of it like this. We all either know somebody or know of somebody who went through a midlife crisis or after the seven year itch decided that they were going to start uh, dating other people or start stepping out of their relationship. Now, when this happens, Usually what's the case? They find somebody, they start dating that person, they get really interested in that person. Now all of a sudden, that person becomes all the, the cure to all the ill and the, and the things that are going wrong in this person's life. They become entertaining, they become fun, they become the thing that you wanna hang out and do. They're like an amusement park ride for the most part. It's a bankation because you get to go over to their house and you get to be a different person. You get to be the place of no problems where you don't have to worry about a whole lot of issues. And for Cody, I think that that's exactly what Robin represented. She was younger than the wives that he currently had. He didn't go through a lot of the financial struggles that he went through with the wives, especially when they first started out. So he didn't have that experience. So when he started getting with somebody who was much younger than the wives that he was dealing with, and in his eyes, somebody he thought was more attractive than the wives that he was dealing with, of course he's going to start favoring her. So even when she goes back and says that she speaks Cody, Cody and she really understands Cody. It's not the fact that she understands Cody or she speaks Cody. It's just the simple fact that Cody is more enamored with her than he was with the other wives. We've all heard of situations where guys will go out, get married, and then treat that new family way better than they treated the first family. That's no slight on uh, the sister wives, the OG3. When Cody says that I was never in love with them, I don't think it was that he wasn't in love with them or he didn't care for them. I just think that it was a different kind of love that he had for them. When he looks at Robin, Robin is the fun love. Robin is the love when your bills are paid. Robin is the love when you live in a big old house and you have access to multitude of cars. Cody owns multiple cars. When he was at Lehigh, they were struggling. I, you, if you go back to season one and look at the car, look at the car lot. Look at the parking lot. Okay, you had people driving around with cars with tape on the window. They all riding around on baloney skin tires. just blowing flats everywhere you look. They up on bricks. The damn motor of the uh, Tahoe that Christine was driving blew up because they weren't putting enough oil in the bad boy. It probably had an oil leak for days. I mean, they were just in different financial situations. But because it seems like their life became easier it would be easier for him to enjoy the time that he's spending with Robin. And because he's enjoying that time, again, no slight on the other three wives, it just seems like a better deal for him. So when she comes back and she says something to him, it does seem more like a partnership because he's actually actively listening to what she has to say. He's willing to bend or break some of the rules that he first established with his first wives. This isn't a new thing. And that's one of the, the funny things to me. This is something that is very commonplace. A lot of times when they talk about polygamy and even monogamy, they have a, a way, especially in the earlier seasons, they always had a way of looking down on people who are monogamous. Like it was a bad thing. Like somehow, if you're a monogamous, you're not doing the right thing. And your, your life is on easy mode because my life is hard because I have to do polygamy. And polygamy is hard. Polygamy is as hard as you make it, I think. And monogamy, likewise, is as hard as you make it. 
When you do polygamy, if you're only worried about yourself, you're only concerned about making yourself happy, and you're not concerned about making your partners happy, just like in a monogamous relationship, if you're only worried about yourself and you're not worrying about your partner, then what's going to happen is your relationship is going to break down. You're going to have a very difficult time. People are going to be upset. People are not going to want to stay, and people are going to want to leave. And that's what we watched, and that's what we witnessed over the course of the 18 seasons that we've watched Sister Wives. Now, as we move forward, especially being as though I'm kind of getting restarted, there was a point where I wanted to do a uh, book club on Becoming Sister Wives, right? And this is the uh, Sister Wife book. And I'll be doing this on Sundays at 10 o'clock. Um... If anybody, I know there are some people, creators, who had already started doing a book club and kept going. If any of them want to reach out to me, I'm more than willing to do a collaboration. I think it'll be kind of cool. Uh, I don't want to step on any toes because I was going to do it before, but after everything that happened, I uh, discontinued the uh, the series or at least suspended it. But I'm ready to get back into it now. And if you guys ever want to come on to my channel or if you want me to come on yours, just hit me up. My questions or my take on reality questions at gmail.com. Let me know. I'm more than willing to do it. But I will be talking about the book because I think it'll be interesting to see where they started and how things came about. And again, I'm taking a position that everybody has to carry their own water. So instead of us looking to Robin and trying to blame Robin on the family falling apart or things not working out or the uh, wives or and or kids feeling neglected or uh, dejected from Cody and his attention, we have to keep in mind that this is something that's very commonplace. This is almost uh, the banality of it is, is and the blandness of it is almost uh, impalpable just in the sense that when you look at it, Cody is doing what a lot of middle-aged men do. He went out, started a new family, and he's only really worried about his new family. <laughs> no mystery solved. Again, we're going to keep it positive on the channel. We're going to keep moving forward. We're going to keep talking about it in ways that try to connect the dots to the to everybody else and maybe put some uh some pep on it have some fun with it if you guys enjoy that kind of content make sure you subscribe to the channel ring bell for notifications also don't forget to share the video like the video leave your take down below let me know what you guys think that's my take i'm james this has been my take on reality and i'm out